We are live. What's up, bigger pockets? Uh, if you got it's echoey. <laughs> uh, my name is Tarl Yarber with Fixated Real Estate, and we're here with Mr. Jared Holland with JH1 Realty. Uh, and we're promised you guys one of the coolest major property walkthroughs that we can come up with. We're doing this every single week at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Bigger Pockets Live for Facebook, YouTube Live for Facebook, and also BP Live on BP. So check it out every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Right now we're here in Bothell, Washington, which is uh, Seattle, if you guys didn't know that. And they pan around this thing a little bit. Check out this over, do you guys see, there? there's a garage back there. I don't know if you guys can see that. <laughs> so uh, Jared was just on what episode for Bigger Pockets? Uh, I was on episode 341. So what episode? 341, guys. 341, he just came out this week. Check out Jared on BP. It just so happens that we end up being bros, so it's all good. So we're like, let's do a live video together. So we're gonna walk through this whole project together with Jared, go from ABCs of everything that he's doing on it, what he's, he's just started demo. Where are, you, where are you guys at right now on schedule? Uh, we literally just started demo today. So we had 10 vehicles out here, the house is torn apart, we're moving quickly already. There's a lot going on. So all right, come with me really quick, we're gonna meet up Jared in a second, and I'm gonna get down from here. All right, one of the fun parts about doing live videos is we get to screw around and kind of figure stuff out. So we're going to go over a few things today. We're going to go over how did Jared buy this property and the acquisition process for it. We're going to go over how he estimated the rehab and everything with it. We're going to go over all the major concerns as well as the design factor with what he's doing in here because this place is a mess. It is fully overgrown with so much stuff, plus the inside is completely torn apart. It's a big, major property you walk through. At the end of it, we're going to go through all the numbers and to, tell you, to show you guys what kind of money he's going to make, how much he's going to spend, and then like maybe in a couple months, we'll come do a live video to do an update on this project too, which would be a lot of fun. So let's go walk the property first, show you guys what it looks like, and at any time, this is a question and answer web, uh, uh, live event. So if you guys have questions, you could ask us on Facebook, you can ask us on YouTube, whichever one you guys are following right now. Uh, Facebook's being monitored by our two lovely gentlemen here, one of them holding the camera, and the other person, Justin, who's, uh, he just showed up out of nowhere. We don't even know this guy, but we put him to work, so. There he is. Hey, he's an electrician, too. Yeah. Um, so check out, all right, tell us about this property. All right, guys, first of all, I have this handy machete, just in case we try to venture out into the wilderness, but yep. I'll, I'll be careful with it, I promise. Uh, so first thing, right when you walk in, this was actually our entrance to the house, the front door, totally boarded up. It's been vacant for four years now. So first thing you see is just a giant pile of crap. There's a, a busted old uh, lawnmower over here Yeah, as we'll, we'll get in there in a second. There's also, what are these? Can you turn, turn the light on for a second? Yeah, come on in here. Okay. Uh, this is exactly how it was when I took possession, exactly how it was when I walked the house for the first time. Does it, look. There's nothing against chickens and stuff like that. We like chickens. But how many people on BP, you know, have chickens that they store in their garage? Anybody? Not me. Not me. Not, <laughs> not, not you guys. Not really. right. Were there chickens in there when you bought it? No, but no. apparently the whole house had chickens running all around it. So that's part of the reason it just kind of got trashed. And uh, yeah, those those just came with the house. So if anyone needs little chicken coops, anything <laughs> in here is free, by the way. Yeah. So you guys comment on whatever you want. We got little ducks over here. You know, bags of unknown goodies. This is the bonus bag. So the bonus bag. Yeah. It's like it's like when you go to storage wars and you don't know what you're gonna get, right? Fifty this, bucks takes everything. Everything. First, first bidder. Let's That's go. Good. All right, let's check out the rest of the property. And remember, we're gonna go over how we acquired the property, the estimating rehab, uh, the designing the project, and we're gonna go over the numbers and all that kind of stuff to you here in a moment. So just stick with us. And if you guys have any questions at any time, go ahead and ask it. Steve wants to know uh, what what's the story with your shirt. Explain your shirt. Mine? Toral. Mine's just black. So Independence? Right. So this comes from my favorite podcast, besides Bigger Pockets Podcast with Brandon Turner and Jay Scott and all those guys. Uh, Jocko Willink. Uh, check him out. Great, great podcast. It's all about leadership, uh, Navy SEAL stuff. Uh, he makes all these shirts. Love them. So every shirt, my goal is like every time we do one of these, I have a different shirt that they make on. So just watch out for those. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. All right. Check out this key. Check out the door. This yeah, this entrance, though. <laughs> it's a good door. It was at one point. I mean, I think it still has potential. I'm not sure. Yeah. All right, so walk us through this. What would it look like when you bought it? Uh, honestly, it looked basically like this. The guys just started demo this morning, so there was a wall right here. We'll show you on the plans later. And then <clears throat> right, right behind uh, where you're at now is just one more. Uh, just a small pantry right here for the kitchen. Otherwise... 
This is exactly how it was when I bought it. The foreign was still in, but the house was boarded up. Is there any debris in it? Not a ton, actually. In terms of, you know, junky old houses, most of the garbage was in the garage, and then obviously the debris yeah. outside. So let's, let's get a better picture of what's outside. Yeah, come check this out. Guys. This is why I have a machete, by the way, in case we try to go out into this wilderness. It's a little, uh, it's a little bit treacherous. <laughs> Let Don't do it for the vine. Do it, do it for the vine. Okay. Hey, let me see the camera. Yeah, let's go. Just because that, Nate's, Nate's nervous of heights, so he doesn't want to get Here killed. Here, man. So check this thing out. Look how that. Uh, as far as the eye can see. <laughs> crazy. That's all blackberry bushes, bamboo. It's terraced as well. Terraced. Oh, so there's, that's not terraced, that's terraced. And then right here, so there's a shed right here that's got to come down. And shed. And then a smaller one right there. So both those are going to get torn down. And you guys couldn't see it, it, but there's a detached garage. And also, hey, Jared, go stand next to Nate really quick. Okay. So there's Nate. Here's our camera guy. He's also my acquisitions guy. He was on our last video. <laughs> Do these guys look similar or what? It's not like their hairs are parted like Copy in opposite me. directions. I, I'm pretty sure, Jerry. I had mine first. I can almost, I can almost I have, I have proof of it. He's just older. That's the only reason. What do you guys think? Perfect. HGTV, Property Brothers 2.0? What do you think? <laughs> I think it could work. Right. <laughs> I have to steal them from Tarl, though, so I don't know how Tarl would feel about that. Yeah, if you guys check it out, last, last week, Nate and I did a uh, video on acquisition. So check it out on BP Facebook and also YouTube. So let's block the rest of the, uh, okay. the property here. All right, Nate, we, we've advanced for you guys. Remember, 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, every Wednesday, we're doing uh, BP Live for you guys. And I promised you guys from the last one and the one before that, we would get so legit and we'd get an easel. Uh -huh. Look at this. Organized. We have an easel this time. Then we're going to go over these things. Acquisitions, estimated rehab, design, major concerns, and the numbers on this entire project. And we got floor plans. So then we can go over that. It's like... So this is professional. Next level, <laughs> man. You're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah, that's BS. So, uh, <laughs> you guys got a question off YouTube yeah. from Wakondo. What percentage of this deal came out of pocket? Out of pocket. So like, uh, so we're assuming that you're asking the question, uh, how much did he have to pay out of pocket versus yeah. financing? Uh -huh. Right. So we can go over the numbers, but explain how do you do the financing on this one? Uh, so this one I did a hard money loan. So I did 90% um, acquisition, then a financing renovation out of pocket. So you have to put so you so you have to put ten percent down and yep. you're paying for the rehab out of pocket. Correct. Yeah, it made more sense. It actually cost me less in terms of financing to be able to finance the rehab out of pocket. It's a pretty substantial renovation on this place. So how much and, are you looking to spend on rehab? Uh, best case scenario, if I'm like really frugal, which will not happen by the way, uh, 120 to. I budgeted on the worst end about 160. 160. All right. 120 is like he's got it. 160 is what he's bought the property as, saying like, okay, 160, we can yeah. be good to go. So he's able to finance that now. He's been doing houses for a while. Listen to uh, Bigger Pockets Podcast 341, which just came out. That's why Jared's here, uh, or else, you know, nobody knows who he is unless he's on the BP Podcast. <laughs> but uh, uh, so listen to that. You'll hear his story more on that. But that said, if you guys are starting out and you don't have 160 grand to put in renovation, there's plenty of people you can join venture with. There's yeah. people that you can borrow from. There's uh, notes. There's all sorts of stuff we can get into on that. Maybe if we have time later in this episode or a future video that we do as well. But for now, good questions. Keep asking questions. And I actually go through a couple different financing options if you can't finance out of pocket in my episode. So yeah. I, I touch on that. So bit. check it out. BP1341. He goes through how he seller finances even and does joint ventures with people. It's a lot of good info. Uh, and uh, he unfortunately didn't say on there. I thought I thought he was going to. I, I, next time, next time. I Go thought ahead. he was going to tell the truth and say that the reason why he's successful is because he met me I, in real estate a few years ago with Nate at one of these properties. But you even talked about that property. Like, oh my he's gosh, that property. Up. He's going to no, bring this up. Now. Maybe I will now. I think if you would have bought that one, it would have been the catalyst to my career. Yeah. Why are we he taught you? Why are we housing this? Anyways, uh, last story. Let's hey, there's a question. Uh, Eric wants to know about mold. Have you found mold in the property? There is mold in a lot of areas. If you can, well, let's see. There's some dry rot too. Right? Yeah, there's dry rot. I mean, do you want to jump into that now, or do you want to let's walk? Just walk well, I'll show you guys. Yeah. There's, there's a lot, lot going on. Look, there's a lot going on. Let's zoom in on this really quick. If you guys don't know what that is, that's not debris. That's rat droppings, right? So that's a uh, that's good old fashioned rat, rat droppings. And that smells like money. Okay, yeah, you guys can't smell it. Right? 
So let's go upstairs. This is what's called a, uh, was this a school level? No, this is like a multi-level house. If you walk in and you go up, which let's talk about this entry and how amazing this is gonna be when we're done. Replacing these railings here. We're gonna demo this uh, little half wall here. We'll put all new metal railings. And so a like, big, the, uh, like the modern metal rails? Yeah, so this house, just so you guys don't sit over here. We're gonna do a modern design on this house. This is a mid-century modern home and it's just like begging for that design. So when we redo this, we have floating stairs all the way down this also. So we're gonna redo the stairs. Or like, like, the, like, the, like the glue lamps type stairs or floating? Uh, these are floating now, so okay, yeah, so get that view. So we're gonna replace the ones that are broken. Actually, we're replacing all of them with new, what are those, four by 12s or whatever they are. Um, and we're gonna re-stain those double front door. Yeah, yeah we're gonna stain them. Yeah. Oh man, they're gonna be, they're gonna be gorgeous. I'm yeah. really excited about this house, guys. Cool. All right, let's look at the rest of it. We got skylights. Yes. Oh yeah, we're gonna put a, a nice big pendant light hanging down here with one solid window above, so all the neighbors can look in and just be a little bit jealous. So <laughs> that would be nice. Jared, uh, Lala Roberts is uh, taking chicken coops, so she got them. Set those all aside. right. Beautiful! Sold! Let's do it! See, so ask and you receive. Seriously, you guys see any in the house outside of two holes? <laughs> you can have them. Yeah. Uh, so let's, let's, let's go do this room last. This All is right. a cool room, this right? Uh, but you got bedroom here. Who cares about that one? Yeah. Nice bathroom. Let's check this oh, out. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's have them peek out the window. Okay. Why don't you peek out the window and see what we have outside? Uh, um, hey, touch uh, the camera, man. We're, we're, we're so, so, here's, a, here's the side of the garage huh? that you guys can see. This just shows how overgrown this entire place is. Like, it actually drops off pretty far down there. We have ivy growing all the way up the side of the garage. Just this whole place is Jumanji under attack. Let's do a sound check. Can I ask it? If people can hear, okay. Can you guys hear us all right at all? Uh, so when we're doing this, uh, we're testing out new equipment. So let us know and if it's if we have anybody, if we have more than four or five of you guys say you can't hear us, then let us know. If it's just one of you, it might be you're the only one that needs to turn up your audio. Yeah, so four that can't do it on YouTube. They right? can't hear us. Yeah, this is bad audio. Is it? They can't hear it, it's just bad audio. Let's try something here. Right. So, you guys continue to let us know if you hear the audio bad or not. We just changed, we just removed the external speaker. Uh, and we're going to do our best. So, the audio is choppy. Choppy. Okay, got it. It's yeah, it might be network connection. It might be, it might be YouTube because uh, Facebook is. Yeah, doing Facebook good. is doing good, right? Yep. Alright, so jump on to, if you guys want, if you're on YouTube right now, we've got to keep this video going. You can jump onto Facebook. Uh, everybody there is saying that it's great on that. YouTube is, this is still in beta. YouTube still has beta issues with the live streaming. So just keep that in mind. That's why we've been having issues with YouTube uh, in the past. So uh, so anyways, keep letting us know. That's great. Let's check this out. Okay. Come on to this bathroom, guys. <laughs> oh, let me see that. Hey, everybody. Oh, oh that's weird. We're it's gonna nice. do a deep cleaning on that. Deep clean. Totally reusable. Totally reusable. <laughs> uh, I'll talk about this real quick. So okay. again, this house has been vacant for four plus years, something like that. When that happens, people break in, and people broke in looking for copper. So you'll see holes in the walls in random places. Luckily, it's all pecs in the house, so they got this far and then they gave up and went on to whatever else they do. So. Have you had other houses have all the, the copper stolen before? Not all of it. I've had houses with stuff stolen. Luckily, never wiring, because that's when they just destroy, destroy the house. Everything. And they could have done that here. Yeah. They could have done that here, but luckily, they just were you know, going for the copper and they So, Facebook, you guys are doing good on audio, I hope. So, I'm going to put this. YouTube's getting better. YouTube's getting better? It's, it's, yeah, mixed reviews. We're working on it, guys. Good. So, uh, someone asked about mold, I think, right? Mold. So, we have mold in a lot of different areas in the house. The roof leaked at one point, so if you want to pan up here, this is the kind of stuff you have to be looking at when you walk through the houses. You're not just looking straight ahead, you're looking up, down, in corners, everywhere. A lot, you have a good amount down here. That's probably just surface mold. Yeah. When it looks black and stuff, like up here, if you pan up here, this is an area that you really have to watch out for because that's penetrated deep into the walls, and when we go up into this other super cool little secret room, you'll see where that came from. Yeah, so it's always, there's always a reason for everything, and sometimes in the Pacific Northwest, 
It's, I mean, you got a broken window here, so it's that's just ventilation. It's that ventilation. Is ventilation. Yeah. It's ventilation. Sometimes it's a ventilation issue, which is what's <laughs> common, and that's how you get mildew. Yeah. Um, you know, you start seeing stains, or you start seeing like obviously there's a really big patch here, like something yeah. happened, right? So you're looking for all these triggers when it comes to renovation and rehab that makes you want to explore more. There's a reason why that's there. Yeah. So correct? Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. All right, let's check out the master bathroom. What are you going to do here? Are you going to leave it open, or what are you going to? Yeah, so we're going to leave this open. We're going to tile for right here down. Before there was a, a single vanity here, so we're going to put a double sink in right here. A new mirror, like you can see, the part sitting on the ground right over there, it just tore out. So we're going to keep this layout the same. What's cool about this master bedroom also is you have a closet on that side, so you have like a hidden mirror, and then you also have another closet here. And again, so this mold. So we're going to be cutting a lot of drywall out, cutting all this drywall out, making sure it's not penetrating into the, um, in the insulation and everything else because. It'll come back if you don't get rid of all. Yeah, and a lot of like I'm looking at it. From, I'm not an old expert. This is, I'm really thinking this is mostly mildew. Yeah. Uh, because of the lack of like just there's no heat in the house for four years and it just builds up and yeah. you still could cut it out and everything. But it's uh, but sometimes too many people could also go a little too overboard yeah. because it's not as yeah ha happy medium. What would be good to do is basically you can try to clean the areas and then you'll cut uh, a little hole to just do a, a test and you can see if it's penetrated through the drywall. Are you doing a shower in here or are you leaving a bath? Yeah, so this we're going to convert into a big walk-in shower. So we're most likely going to make a custom shower pan. I'm on the fence, depending on budget. We may or may not do a rain shower head above. Oh, and that's then crazy. one on the wall. Those are sizzle features. Yeah, that's that, that's that $160,000 rehab. Versus, yeah, it adds up. $20,000. <laughs> yeah, I never do those shower features. I mean, I like fancy stuff, so I mean, I think I might do it. <laughs> so do you recommend, okay, next question. Do you recommend people to do rehab based on what you like or what makes you the most money? Uh, I think it, not what you like, because what you like doesn't necessarily mean other people are going to like it. I think you study the market. My Shoreline house is a perfect example. I just finished a house that, I'll give an example of flooring. So typically I just do engineered hardwoods or solid hardwood floors. The house didn't require for it, so I did laminate flooring. So it's a it's kind of a fine line because it's really easy to get into a house and just want to do everything as nice as you can, or the flip side of that, and go cheap as you can to try to maximize your profit. And then when you try to sell it, people can tell it's yeah. it's cheap. So it's it's a fine balancing act because you don't want to go too light and you don't want to go too fancy. You have to know your market is the most important part of that. And one of, one of the things I've always appreciated about Jared because there's a lot of house flippers out there that go the cheap route on everything and also give a bad name for other house flippers. And so when we see something wrong, Jared or Jared and I see something wrong, we know it needs to be fixed. We're going to fix it uh, because it's what makes a strong house because of the reputation that we have. Uh, but at the other end, neither one of us, I, I know me at least, I'm not going to go overboard on the uh, finishes yeah. if the comps and the comparables and that market don't justify it, yeah. right? So like, yeah, I would pick on you about the, the rain, the rain, the overhead rain shower, I don't think would give more value. However, it might be it's what wow you said factor. is a wow factor, which yeah. might help the house sell faster. Yeah. It's not going to help you get more money, right? So that's the, that's the big thing. Yeah. And, and on that note though, so when you, you're looking at doing these kind of uh, upgrades, it's easier to do it when you're actually going through the process. So if that wall is open and I'm putting new tile and everything, it's not that much more to add one extra water line and run it up top, but it is a little bit of a domino effect, right? You have to buy a new valve and then you're buying another fixture to put up there. So it's probably maybe 500 bucks somewhere yeah. in that ballpark. And it depends on how fancy your valve fixtures yeah. are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you have like the multiple different thingies. Yeah, and body sprayers. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You'd water pressure for that. Yeah. All right, so let's <laughs> check out this over here, guys. So this is one of those situations that you open up a wall and there's a surprise. Yeah. So can you guys see that all right? Yeah. So, so what what is all this stuff? Well, that's, that's, that's that? not just dry rot. That's, oh man, that's termites. Termites? Yeah, it looks like termites probably over here. And I just found this out, guys. This is brand new, fresh, exciting content. So that's what termites look like from my experience, or at least the uh, what it looks like when they eat it all up. And that's one of those things you can see here. You can just... Uh, if I have a machete, you know, see my foot. Hey, hey, easy, easy, easy. You break it, you buy it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so the uh, ass broke it anyways. So, yeah. so you just you just want cover this all up? And yeah, yeah. No, the best way to do this is you actually put duct tape on the back side and then just a lot of paint. You know? A lot of paint on the other side. Okay. No, so this actually kind of sucks because I didn't know this was here. We knew there was some mold on the side, and I actually knew that there was damage to the siding on the other side. So luckily, we were already replacing this portion of the siding. So the only added cost that we have to do now, so we have to reframe all of this that's just totally dry rotted up, 
you saw Tarl's toe just poking through that. So we have to put new sheathing and then siding on here. But this is the kind of stuff that he's talking about. When you run into this in a house, it's really important to fix the entire problem, not just put a band-aid on it or cover this up. Like that's that's the type of thing that, you know, just it doesn't help you sleep at night either. So make sure you do everything yeah. the right way. And I would also assume for I'm gonna speak for you that like when you have a house that's so much trash, so much overgrown, has been empty for so many years. You kind of have to add these contingencies of what the heck are we going to find when we start opening up the walls because you know you can't just do surface level stuff and think everything's okay. So you do you buffer in a little bit for finding weird stuff like this, right? I had a twenty percent contingency on this one. I knew that this is like kind of the tip of the iceberg of just things that I was going to find. Yeah. So you you always have to plan for it, especially on a house like this. Yeah, make it for four years. Yeah. yeah. So remember guys, we're going to go over here soon, we're going to go to our fancy easel, we brought one, if you guys are just tuning in and you didn't see it earlier, and we're going to go over how he found this house in detail, we're going to go also go over all the concerns and stuff for the rehab on this, the numbers, we're going to break down the actual numbers of the entire project uh, and the design. So make sure you guys ask any questions now that you guys have, now's the time to do it while we're going through all this stuff, we're going to keep walking through this property as we go, remember we're doing this at 12pm every uh, Pacific Standard Time every Wednesday with bigger pockets and we're going to look at doing more videos like this uh, as much as possible so it's just not talking head stuff, you guys are seeing real stuff, so keep, keep that in mind. So I want to take this camera real quick yeah. because I went in this room like maybe about an hour ago and, all of a sudden, and I didn't even see yeah. this part here, it confused, I'm like holy crap that snuck up on me. So, Jared, go up there for a second. Yeah, and check this out. It's a really cool feature of the home. So this is one of a lot of things when I first walked through this house that surprised me because you come in this bedroom thinking it's tiny. Go me take the yeah, camera. Yeah, take the camera. You come in this bedroom thinking it's tiny and then you walk awesome. up this ladder and then next thing you know, you have this awesome loft. It goes all the way back there. This is about 20, I think 22, 23 feet long. So it's just this great extra bonus space. It more than doubles the size of this bedroom. And then uh, in terms of stuff to look for, guys, I, I'm sure you see that on the ceiling right there. So that's another example of something to plan for. There's a lot of mold that's grown on the roof or on the top of the wall there. So that's most likely damage to the roof. So that's something we're going to have to cut out. We're going to have to follow that all the way down. And that's most likely where the water came down, down in the master bedroom over there. So all that's going to get cut out and then the roof will be repaired. I'm coughing. I think I'm getting the black lung. Oh God! So the uh, uh, so for those of you guys that are on YouTube right now, we just posted in the comments, uh, or Justin did, the link to go to Facebook to make it run a little bit better for you. If YouTube's not really working for you, so you can click on that. Check the comments right now for that. Let's go and check out the rest of the house. Remember, if you guys have any questions or anything, just ask them at any time. We have a lot of questions about renovation costs. Renovation costs. Go we'll through all that. Several times. questions. So, on so how you found the property? Something else that I had to say for you guys. So when you walk through the house again, it's really important to be looking high, low, everywhere that you can think of. You're checking fixtures. You're checking, you know, plumbing, electrical, everything you can. This is something I saw ahead of time because doing a very thorough walkthrough, I saw it. So apparently, this door has been blown open for a long time. And we have more dry oh, rot yeah. over in this corner. So actually, you know what? What are those? Carpenter ants. Lots, lots of carpenter ants. Is that what that those, is? Those are all carpenter ants. Sweet. So that's also another bonus. But you can see this is totally just rotted out. So we're going to have to tear all of this flooring out. And we're going to have to rebuild the floor joists around here. Or the rim joists even, possibly. Yeah, this is... Yeah, I mean, look at that. There is no rim joists. <laughs> so... That's stuff you need to be prepared to do. So I had this budgeted ahead of time. So I saw this ahead of time and I knew this was going to be a problem. The bugs did not know about yeah. it. So, so they're, they're, they're exterminator once we get this land cleared. So those coming in. carpenter ant, everybody's city is different. You guys are probably, you know, so depending on where you are and you're in the United States, you have different bugs that will eat your stuff up. Carpenter ants and termites here are a big deal. Uh, and those are carpenter ants. So cool. the uh, first experience with those. Yeah, yeah. We, there was a house that I did back in 2012 uh, where we opened up a wall and there was just dust, like nothing but dust in there, and it was all carpet. The entire wall was just being held up by sheetrock because of the, the dust from uh, the carpenter ants. So there's a good chance too, which he might not know this, is that his rim joist, which is on the other side of that, might be all eaten up, and he might now, congratulations, might have this entire rim joist here might need to be replaced or at least a portion of it because of the carpet ran. So. Good luck. So the uh, <laughs> so stuff, guys. let's go into acquisitions. Right? Let's just jump straight to that. Uh, Chris R wanted to know like a specific like for this. Did you have a certain number you put as a budget? 
I did. Okay. So for this specifically, I think I had like two thousand dollars budgeted for, yeah. and that was going to cover tearing everything out, all the labor, and I, I knew that this was going to be a problem, so I had a decent budget for it ahead of time. And I, honestly, I didn't realize it'd be on this corner also, but I think with what I had budgeted, it should be enough to repair all of this. One lesson I would say is over budget as much as you can, not like double, but like ten to twenty percent. Of what you think it's going to cost. Especially when you don't know the real issue. Yeah. So that's the big thing. If you know the real issue, you can budget it. But like in this yeah. scenario here, you're like, there's a lot of crap in here. You don't know what you're going to find. There's yeah. a major issue there that can lead to these other things. So you don't want to be caught up there. Exactly. So let's talk about acquisition really quick. How did you find this property? Uh, I found this property through our, our handy guy. This guy over there. Hey! hey and uh, he got his first wholesale deal, I guess. Technically, marketing <laughs> fee, finder's fee, whatever finders you want to call it. Finder's fee. Bird yes. dogging. Bird dogging. So, uh, he actually happened to be a neighbor. Well, let me back up. Neighbor of this house. Yeah, yeah, let me back up to where it all started. Wait, is your house any better than this house, or? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> this house is much better. I'm gonna increase his property values. Maybe I'll send him a bill later for that. Yeah. I'm so not sure yet. Uh, so I met Justin at a networking event. Total random event. We just started talking about just kind of business in general. He's an electrician. I'm in real estate. I flip houses, so we had some rapport there. We got in contact after that. Uh, he was just interested in the industry, so we met for coffee, talked about how to get started, and I gave him some tips, and a little bell went off in his head, and he's like, actually, I know of a house. He was like, this house next door has been vacant forever. The seller has been, he's had it for a really long time, and he's finally at the point ready to sell at a reasonable price. Justin connected me to him, I followed up with the seller, and I had a contract, I think, within a week after that. So I knew roughly what he was asking, I viewed the house, yeah. Called him back, negotiated it. We went back and forth a little bit, um, not much really, and uh, sent him contracts through uh, email. Signed him, bought the house. So let's let's explain this a little bit more in one little facet. That's the cool thing for those of you guys watching the video, especially if you're starting out, right? So Justin, he's a successful uh, electrician, all stuff that he's not in real estate. He's not He's at a networking event, that kind of stuff, right? You, you want to get into real estate investing? Is that the thing? Or you don't just care? Always been interested. In just it. interested, yeah. right? So, so he did something. He bird dog. He he literally just all he did was give you a lead, yep. right? He and the phone number and the phone number to the owner, yep. right? Yep. So he just did those two things, and in return, you did the rest of the work, right? Yep. How to get the deal done, yep. and get it all set up, make sure the numbers work, pencil it all out. Yep. Justin just softballed it up to you and be like, here you go. There's something here. Yep. Uh, and but you did the rest of the work. Now in return yep. for doing that. I'm gonna, is it okay we say? Yeah. yeah. How much? <laughs> now you have to declare it on taxes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How much of a bird dog fee did you give Justin after you bought the property? Yeah. So I gave him thirty five hundred bucks. I wrote him a check today when we got on site, and that's a little bit more. I seen it. He saw. He, saw, he asked for one also, and I said no. <laughs> Thanks, folks. Um, that's a little bit more than I'd usually give, but. Uh, Justin wants to kind of get into this industry and he actually is in an industry being an electrician where he, I kind of opened his eyes and took the blinders off a little bit when we talked that he has consistent, yeah, I'm going to put this over there, I might, I might stab somebody on accident. Uh, he has consistent lead flow, right? Something you guys need to always be aware of is realizing the potential leads you have coming through. He gives bids on houses that need electrical work. If they can't afford to do a huge electrical remodel on their house, maybe they'd be interested in selling. And so I, I kind of showed him those ropes, and I'm expecting more deals because of that. And that big, <laughs> yeah. beautiful, big, beautiful check yeah. I wrote it. <laughs> the, the best part, if you guys are trying to source leads for yourselves, networking, in my opinion, yeah. I say it lots of times on different videos, networking is the number one key to what I've done in my success. Uh, and then that's, I mean, that's how we met, which is networking. Yeah. I met, went to a networking event years ago uh, when he was starting out and stuff, and we shut him down. Like we said, your deals suck. But the, uh, but then for, the, but he learned a lot from that that's experience. Right. And now you look at him. So the, uh, <laughs> and John, that's our name, met him and stuff too. But we love this guy. Uh, you know, Justin, he just makes, gives a lead, you make it happen, yeah. he gets paid 3,500 bucks, foot in the door, no risk on his part whatsoever, yeah. which is great. And if you're a wholesaler, you can think of that. If you're starting out, maybe your wholesaling is kind of scary. You can start that way. And if you're an investor, go network and find more people like Justin to go find deals like this. Get eyes everywhere. Yeah. And you have to put some work into it. Yeah. And we just did that. We just did it. What, what did we just do? Same thing. Oh yeah, with, uh, with Jorge. Jorge, if you're watching this, thank you. So, and I think yeah. for the investors, one of the most important things to do when you're working with kind of newer people is helping to educate them on where they can find deals and understanding some of the process because yeah. it really is like, he gave me a phone number and that was it and I did the rest. So like if someone has access to a property, a vacant house or whatever it is, just making those connections and I think helping people realize that there's, there's deals out there, you just have to know the right questions to ask. Yeah.
Good stuff. So let's break it down when you talk to the seller, what happened with that? Uh, so I called the seller originally, um, and luckily he wanted like a pretty reasonable price for the house. So he, uh, we can go into that a little yeah. bit now. So he wanted 400,000 for the house, um, which honestly it's a deal at that, but you never want to just say yes. So I walked through the house and I was like, okay, that seems reasonable. And when you talk to the seller originally, it's really important to build rapport with these people. And cause I've never met him. I've never met him. He lives in San Francisco. So I had a couple pretty long calls, like 30 minutes plus, like just talking to this guy, getting to know him, understanding the situation, understanding his motivation. And then we talked about numbers, he got me access. I came out here when someone else was looking at it also. I don't know if they actually did, but there's always other people looking, of yeah. course. Um, and so I came out, ran my numbers on the house, put my repair budget together. And this house was actually hard to comp because it's surrounded by new construction. There's no houses like this that have been renovated. So. But this house is really unique because it's on a huge lot, so it's actually two lots. Um, Are you going to do anything with the other lot? Yeah, so I'm actually going to keep this house. Okay. So my plan is to hold on to this house and then eventually I'm going to subdivide and build you a house. Live here? No, okay. I'm not going to live this. I'm going to rent this house out. So, okay. but so it's a bird! Bird! It's a bird! <laughs> I didn't even know that! <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be a bird. This whole video just changed. <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, so, anyway, so I ran the numbers. I, I offered him 385. And I would have said yes to 400, I really would have. But again, you gotta negotiate a little bit. I offered him 385, uh, he kind of thought about it for a day, he countered me at three, I don't know, we ended up selling on 393. We kind of split the difference. Um, so let's write this up. Okay. Let's go to the fancy easel. Oh, this is just lying around, like, you know, <laughs> this came with the house. came with the house. Important thing to note, Jerry. Yes. He told me 750 three that's, months ago. That's true. 750? That's what he told me three months ago. Yeah, so originally he wanted 750, which, no deal. But to be honest, it would be kind of close if you did subdivide the land and build a new house. Because new construction is selling for like high sevens to low eights around here. So how much was the final purchase? 394000 all in, plus 3500 to my friend uh, Justin over here. Alright, so three ninety four. Yep. And then you had a... Uh, uh, Because I've done a lot of larger renovations, I have a full spreadsheet that I can calculate everything roughly price per square foot. So I just walked through the house, I spent a couple of hours in here and I put together a rough estimate. And when I do my initial numbers, I always overestimate. So like, because typically you have to be pretty quick when you're buying the houses also. So you don't always have time to have a contractor come in here. Yep. So I just start from, I come in the front door or wherever I come in and I just walk through the entire house and you're just looking through everything top to bottom, Typically, I'd go through and I'd test outlets and all of that stuff, but this house was built in, uh, I don't know, after Knob and Tube. I can't remember the exact date it was built, so Knob and Tube wasn't... I'm going to say this is like 50s, 60s. Yeah, I think it's 60s, yeah. something like that. Um, so no Knob and Tube was in here. I know that for a fact. The panel was updated. You can see this is not Knob and Tube wiring on yeah, the floor. that's new. Yeah, so we have new wiring throughout the house. I think it might even be 70s, actually. And then there's also uh, PEX plumbing. So those are two big ticket okay. items yeah. yeah, that I didn't have to worry about. So I basically walked through the house kind of room by room more or less and I just put together price per square foot for flooring, the cabinets, countertops, and just worked through everything kind of line by line. So you didn't always, well, 
Here's the thing. That maybe you guys listen to the VP podcast with Jared. 341 just came out this week or last week or something like that. Last week. Last week. Uh, last, last Wednesday. Wednesday. Last Wednesday. Wednesday. Hey, keep keep on this Wednesday schedule, man. <laughs> you'll hear that one of the things that Jared's story is that he started out in construction, right? right as a painter, had a painting company and stuff. So he, he, had, he came into the real estate investing with a little bit more knowledge on construction and rehab than the average investor that's starting out. Right. When I started out, I had zero. And I had zero interest in ever learning about rehab and construction. It's my least favorite thing, yet I'm a freaking, I was going to cuss, I'm a freaking expert on it now, but not because I want to, trust me, it's because that's what this business does to you. Um, I had more here, it's receding now. But for the, uh, so that said, if you're starting out, like how I started out learning rehab and construction, right, I definitely didn't, we do now, but I didn't have like a full scope of work, breaking it down, I didn't even know how to inspect a house like this. Then right? you don't buy this house, okay? First exactly. of all, do not buy a house like this if you can't bid it, because yeah. you will lose your butt. Yes. Change orders, everything, uh, it all happen. If you have, so my recommendation for anybody starting out, you don't have to know rehab, but somebody on your team does, yeah. right? Especially when you get into projects like this. Doing your quick flips, depending on where you are in the US, part, keep paint, carpet, you know, formica, all that kind of stuff. Most people can do that. That's all cosmetic, cosmetic rehab and repairs and stuff like that. You can do a lot of that. You still should know some basics, but um, at the end of the day, get a good relationship with the GC and the home inspector and you'll be good to go. Or oh. come through with all your subs. Like if yeah. you can coordinate everything and have everyone come through at the same time, you got to plan for at least a couple hours also. Yep. Then you can at least get solid numbers because yeah. they're going to see stuff you don't know. And I miss stuff still. I really do. But that's why I have a big contingency. Like when my contractor comes through still, like when after I buy a house or before it, he points out things yeah. that I didn't see. So <laughs> check out the book. Uh, well, go ahead. Uh, check out the book by Jay Scott, our bro Jay. Jay Scott and I, by the way, guys, are going to start doing w weekly webinars for Bigger Pockets. So look out for that. We're going to be doing one probably about two weeks on Thursday uh, with Jay Scott and I. We're going to break down like how to systemize businesses and stuff like that. We're going to do that for BP coming up. So keep keep that up. But Jay Scott wrote a book called uh, How to Estimate Rehab uh, for Bigger Pockets. You can buy it on BP. Uh, it's a book that actually it's actually a book I bought to kind of go like, all right, now that I'm on my because I, I left my business partnership and I had to go learn rehab. Uh, on my own, I bought that book and it was actually a good guideline to kind of give me some background and some of the knowledge I had to define things like a rim joist. I didn't know what that was uh, a couple years ago. I do now, right? But check that book out. It's a great book. Uh, all right. So you got, so you bud, question. A couple questions. Uh, did you use the BP calculator to run your numbers? Did you have your own? I have my own. And on that note, what's really important is um, learning the pricing for your market because every market's different, people price per hour is different. So if I were to take these numbers now and go in like Mississippi or something, like somewhere in the Midwest, <laughs> oh man, it would be <laughs> half the price. Yeah. So what's the most important thing is learning. You can start with a base and then adjusting for whatever your market actually yes. actually you know. It's a huge, huge thing. So Yep. A couple other questions. Did you uh, how long have you budgeted for this project or how long is the time? Six weeks. Six. Okay. You're gonna be done six weeks. I'll show you the milestones. No, oh, that's yes, a lie. You. We're gonna go like this. There was how we watch my Instagram story. We had ten trucks out here. You see all this debris? This was just today. A few hours of work. We do. I got things to do and houses to buy. People, come on. Yeah, this is a, this is a full up project for us. <laughs> <laughs> no. We don't care as much. Six weeks? So, yeah. Six weeks and we're June 4th. I want to see a dollar bet to say it's... We have a it's, one it's, week, we have a one week variance in the contract. Yeah. So seven <gasps> oh yeah. yeah Landscaping will be gone next week, man. So, we're, we're so the last question on that is, an, are you acting as your own GC on this project? I'm not. No, nope. so I hired a GC on every project. I have a general contracting license, but that's just for me to have uh, the ability to control schedules and hire subs if I need to. But I am a big believer in spreading out risk. So I always have a GC that I hire for every project. But then, well, you do have subs that you're friends with and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so of course. Everything just ran through that GC. Yeah, no, subs Subs are the one thing that's really important to have a lot of because people get busy. And so if you don't have a deep roster of at least a couple of subs, that's when schedules get pushed out a lot. Ask him about his drywall issue. That yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we so, got somebody down too, buddy. Yeah, was it for me? No. Oh, man, that's okay. So, <laughs> what was the question? I can use your own GC. Nah. That's good. Well, do you, but you GC parts of this job or no? I do. So I put together, I sit down with the, the my GC and we put together the entire my, entire milestone schedule. You want me to grab it? No, show you? we'll show it later. Okay. Uh, and then I work on scheduling the subs when they're needed. So that's about the most that I do in terms of that. And material purchases, 
I handle a lot of those, but my business model is different than a lot of other people's because of the volume that I do. So it's usually easier to have a GC do a yeah. lot of it, but it's really important to stay on top of them in terms of scheduling and timing to make sure that everything is you know yeah. going according to the plan. That's good. All right, so you got, so let's talk about some numbers. So you have rehab, we're just gonna go down the middle okay. and say you have $140,000 of rehab on that. Right, is that good? Yeah, yeah. I think that's reasonable. Reasonable for that. And now, Holding costs yeah. doesn't seem like you bought it for three ninety seven, so you have three forty eight is my three forty eight is the loan, yeah. right? At a ten or twelve percent, something like that. Mm -hmm. No, you got lower. Seven you got seven percent. Who'd you go for? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you do? Is it a it's the hard money guy? The hard money one. Yeah. Certain? I've given them to you. No, I've given you the, the lender before. Oh, whatever. So uh, the all right. So your your payment on it is I don't know. It's like 28, 28, 28, 28 ish, something right. like that. So let's say that you have a four month hold time. Oh, 3,000. Yeah. So you don't got a lot of holding costs here, right? Let's, so. let's, say, let's say 15 for holding costs, yep. which will cover everything. So that'll right. cover so holding utilities is, and that'll cover mortgage payments. 15,000. Yeah. For all that. Right. Okay. Yep. So you got 555,000. Yep. So, so 500. I'm shooting to be, I'm sh my goal is to be at 550 all in is what I'm. Trying to do. All right, so 550, yeah. 555, all in yeah. for the project itself. Purchase, rehab, holding cost, everything. Correct. Right, for the most part. Yep. Okay, cool. Now, what do you think this thing's worth? I think conservatively 750, but I'm kind of hoping for close to 800 because we have an extra lot. So this lot's about 20, just under 23,000 square feet, and the zoning only requires 9,600 per lot. So I'm hoping that's gonna give us a, a good bump in value. Okay, now, this is where we're different than everybody else. Mm -hmm. Wow, you're gonna make $200,000 on this house when you're done. <laughs> yeah, but in reality, uh, there's some other things called uh, selling costs, selling costs mm -hmm. right? And in the state of Washington, do you have to go to the bathroom, Nate? Oh, <laughs> hey, he wait, he's running away, oh he's running away, he's going to the bathroom, that's why he's Tell him guys, you gotta prepare for this. <laughs> <laughs> Amateurs. So professional, so professional. <laughs> yeah. He should have just brought a bottle out and stayed where he was right there. Next time. Next Justin time. could have helped him. <laughs> <laughs> where did the team want to be involved? He didn't pay me enough for that. <laughs> so this is where it gets different. So this is $195,000 in spread, yeah. right, for the most part, but then there's other costs associated, right? right? So you're, you're a licensed realtor, yep. right? So you have your, you know, when you go to listing fee, so let's yeah. let's do the numbers as if he's not a realtor, right? right? Just because we know, we know that he is, but I'm not a realtor. We do have an internal... Uh, real estate agent on our staff and stuff, but I still pay them to list the house and everything. Yeah. Uh, so let's do a, you know, let's do your standard, like let's say it's 6% for real estate commission, mm -hmm. right? Some of you guys might do red fins and mm -hmm. other stuff. And this is if you're gonna sell it. You're not going to, but let's yeah. say that you were going to. Yep. 6%, state of Washington has a 1.78% excise tax that we all love. Yeah. And But we do love it because we don't have to pay state income tax in Washington, That's and I'd rather pay that excise tax all day. Uh, so for so we have 1.78 plus 6% selling yep. plus let's call it like what another 1% or 1.5% I say half a percent. percent so I get investor rates if you do a lot of deals then typically you can get investor rates with yeah, investor I, I calculate 2.3 total with 1.78 yeah so it's basically so the same I have, yeah, yeah, yeah. we do the same right we do that what do you got Tracy <laughs> so, uh, so let's call it for simple math uh, so you got 6 plus eight that 8.5% eight eight right yeah. so for us 8.5 some of you guys might be 9 some might be 7 some for 10, 10 and you're going to be really happy yeah, with that so you got an eight and a half percent. You can just yeah, get your phone out. Yeah, eight and a half percent. Eight point five percent selling costs on seven fifty. Sixty three seven fifty. So that's sixty three thousand seven fifty. Yep. And then minus into that. Yep. So seven fifty minus sixty three seven fifty. We're gonna be six eighty six. Six eighty six minus six eighty six two fifty minus five fifty or five fifty five. Minus five fifty-five. We would have a net profit of roughly one hundred and thirty-one thousand two hundred and fifty-one dollars. All right. So that not a bad deal. If you sold it standard, and if you guys can see, I mean, they see the numbers pretty well on the camera. Yeah. Okay. So I'll zoom in. if you went and sold it as a flip, then uh, paying normal closing costs, everything, and everything goes. Right, he might be a little bit more on rehab, a little bit less. Yeah. He might be a little bit more on ARV, a little bit less, but he has a potential net uh, income on um, this property, net profit of one thirty one two hundred. Right now, do you buy when you buy these houses? Are you looking at just that, or do you have some other equation that you're looking at to be able to know what's a good buy? Because I don't look at that when I buy a house. Yeah, so it's, for me, it's a combination of both. So it's an eighteen percent ROI is what I'm shooting for now. 
or a hundred thousand dollar minimum. But that's sort of a sliding scale. Also, it depends on the size of the project. By ROI, well. you mean like a cash on cash return if you bought everything cash, or like what you're putting out of pocket into it? Uh, total return on the whole thing, not cash on cash. Because cash on cash for this would be epic. I'd be at like two hundred and something. For, no, 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 no. Also, it'd be like eighty-five percent. Like, like so, or something. so you're looking at total project. Yes. Right, as if it all was cash. dollars spent. 100% as if, as if it was cash. Correct. Right. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, I'm on the hook for that much money, right? I'm on the hook for you know this much, not just the cash I put into the deal. So for me, I want to see total dollars spent because when you start looking at just cash on cash returns, there are some deals that might look okay, but it's easy for that profit to get eaten up, especially on lower price points because the numbers are smaller. So you can be like, oh, I can make 18%, but it's only 40 grand. And a $5,000 change all of a sudden that goes down 12%. Exactly, yeah. So, 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 that's so, so let's back up for a second because this is, we just went over all Sorry. craziness right there. So uh, how, I'm just, mm. correct me if I'm wrong, I'll show you, I'll talk about how I look at it, which I think is the same how you're doing based on what you just said. Yeah. So I'm looking at this, I'm looking at, I'm gonna buy a $400,000 house with a $140,000 uh, rehab. Yeah. That's a $540,000 of technical out-of-pocket costs, yeah. right, hard costs on the project, right, to be able to do that. There's some holding costs and all that kind of stuff. But in reality, this is technically the big chunk of it, right? So you're risking 540 to be able to make 131, mm -hmm. right? So at the end of the day, so what you do to calculate like the what's called the margin or the ROI is you, you take these out-of-pocket ones plus the holding costs, right? And then you calculate it into here, like the net profit, so 131 into 555. You doing the math? Yeah. So we're at, at 23%. So this would be a 23%. So that's a deal. ROI. So that's 131,000 into 555 of costs. So that's a 23% uh, ROI on it. That's a great margin. We look for 20 plus percent, right? I used to do 15% for a very long time. And then right? the market slowed down. Yeah, and then we, just, like, we oh, wanted better oh. houses. 18 is a great number too. We'll do that if it's in the right spots and yeah. stuff. Uh, and, but why do we do that? We, and I'm going to assume because you're the same way. It's a risk. This is the risk factor on the property. A lot of people look at that like, holy crap, there's 130 grand. But if you had to invest a million dollars, this number was a million, and this was 130? 13%. 13%, right? That's a very risky deal because stuff can, like a million can go to 950 really fast. Right? Yeah, the big thing about when you get into big numbers, That's a right small so. percent change is still a big number. 10% yeah. on a million bucks, which houses do sell below that sometimes, yeah. there's your profit, 100 grand. 100 grand, go Like on. that. So the, uh, yeah. Ask we, us how we know. Yeah, <laughs> ask us how we know. <laughs> we, we're in a market that it does do that, right? You know, for helps in Seattle. Yeah. So this is a great house. I'm a little jealous of it. Uh, That's I don't why think, I'm keeping it, guys. This extra 63,000. Is now additional profit that I get to keep into the deal because you're not selling it. Because not selling it, so all of those that extra money is going to stay into it. I'm going to refinance it, and then it's, it's additional profit. Yes, what do you think it's going to rent for? We have a question. I'm hoping somewhere in the ballpark of 3,500. I think this is a, a four bedroom, three bathroom house with a detached two car garage, and it's a massive lot. So I think I should be able to charge a premium for this. My mortgage should be somewhere in the ballpark of maybe 2,500 to like. 23,000 on the high end after taxes and insurance and everything. So, but for me, this is just such a cool piece of property. I don't have any intention of getting rid of this anytime soon. And I'm gonna love the renovation. Yeah, because you can like, do something with a lot later. Oh man, there's a long time. I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get the lot line adjusted and get the extra lot out of it probably within the year, maybe after I finish. Maybe I'll use some of the cash that I get out of this deal to then reinvest into it. To, just do the lot line adjustment, then it's just done. Okay, so we, yeah. we had a couple. Hey, sorry, we, we had a couple people uh, asking about that book again. What book did you recommend for rehab? Jay Scott's uh, book, How to Estimate Rehab, and just go on Bigger Pockets, look it up, or Amazon too. Uh, the it's the book on estimating rehab is the title of it, and Jay Scott has it. Good dude. He just did a second edition, so make sure you're getting the new edition. It's blue. The old edition is white. Right. So uh, all right. So moving on the. Let's talk about like, uh, uh, let's do this really quick. So what do you think it's going to praise for? You said 750. I think that's on the lowest, lowest. end. Yeah. All right. So we do 75% uh, of 750. Yeah, hold on. Got to decline this call real quick. <laughs> All right. So 750 times 0. 0.75. So we're 562,500. Five so what? 562,500. 562,500. Which means I should be able to get 75% yep, uh, of loan to value. Yep, loan to value. Uh, 750. Yes. Right. So 
Why do we choose 75%? Because a lot of times most lenders as an investor only allows you to refinance up to 75% of a investment property. And exactly. since it's not your primary residence, he can't do that. He can't do 95% or anything like that. So that's the, if it only appraises for 750, which he thinks it might appraise for 800 or something like that or more because of the extra lot, uh, then he can only borrow 562. Right. If you guys remember, his hard cost and everything in, because he's not selling it, uh, is actually only 555. Yep. So that gives him a chance to get all his money back. Right into the deal and have nothing into it. If you and I'll get some money back. I should get twelve grand, which well, there's closing costs and all that yeah, shit. Yeah, we're doing yeah, TV back. You're, you're not getting twelve grand back. <laughs> yeah. So come yeah, on. We're not, hey, we're not going to bullshit anymore. All right, all right. So there's going to be. I'll get two thousand back. Maybe. Like he's got to pay at least a point of origination and some other stuff. So uh, for so that said, yes. Yeah. Um, payment wise, do you think it's going to cash flow or not cash flow? I think it should. Yeah, we just covered that a okay. second ago. So I think it should be able to rent for around thirty five hundred. Just given the area, and if you guys check out, you know, outside, surrounded by new construction, so, and this is a unique property with a detached two car garage, and again, just well, let's say, street. let's say, if, even if it's a negative cash flow, like, also keep it, you'll still keep it, yeah, okay, yeah, why would you do that? Appreciation, 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 and the extra lot. It's again for me, like, I'm in this mode of like wanting to acquire yeah. cool properties, and like, this is one that the second I walked through it, I knew I wanted to keep this house just because it's. It's so unique and it's in such a great location that it's going to do nothing but appreciate in value. And even if, if I break even on this, I'll be I'll be pretty happy. And, and even just to add to that, right? Uh, you're not just going to break even. Uh, the even if it was negative too, uh, the, the this, you get the depreciation tax benefit. I don't encourage anybody buying properties that are negative cash flow. I just want everybody to be clear on that. Yeah. However, in this situation, like we have one house in our rental portfolio that costs us a hundred dollars, hundred dollars a month. Uh, to have right, it's a negative one hundred bucks, right? So take a gas. Why did we, yeah, yeah. Why did we do that? Like, because normally in my investor mind is like it's losing money, get rid of it. Well, if we sold it, we would net right about one hundred forty thousand dollars net profit selling it right now, right? We didn't need to sell it because we didn't want the tax obligation, right? That was a big thing too. Because when you flip houses, and I'm not a CPA or any of that kind of crap, so look it up. Um, the that's ordinary income, even if you do it into an entity, right? Just keep that in mind. So ordinary income. Uh, so I'm going to get taxed at 30 to 40 percent tax bracket if I sold it, and I didn't need that. So why not keep the house, negative 100 bucks, right? That's 1,200 dollars yeah. in extra cost to hold it on for at least a year to avoid a 30 to 40 percent tax hit. Instead, only get like a 15 percent tax hit based on that because it's, it turns into your short-term capital gains and later long-term capital gains. So that's another reason why to do it too. I like this project because, like, yeah, one you don't have the tax benefit or tax break. I'm sorry. The, tax obligation of selling it, yep. you get the depreciation, there's another play here that you can do with the lot, mm -hmm. right? Which is awesome. And then yep. you can rent this out, even if you rented it out, and while it's rented out, you're working on the lot stuff, right? Yep. You're not having, you're not sitting on a beautiful house while you're trying to do it with the lot. And there's plenty of space, so there's already sewer down at the end of the street also, There's or this road goes all the way down to the end, so in terms of development, it's going to be really straightforward, and again, with new construction going for 800, I have a free piece of dirt. Free dirt. Free dirt, and then, you know, do that math building it, you know, 200 bucks a square foot. Let's look at the floor plans really quick. You can see we found some nails lying around the project. <laughs> <laughs> these, uh, that's that's that. we yeah. So we're here, right? Yes, yeah, so okay. we're, we're right here. Okay. So do you, you see this pretty good? All right, okay. So this wall is not here anymore. Yep, right? so this is the biggest thing. So just so we're, like... We're, we're right here. Yep, yeah, so we're right here. So. Whenever you walk through a house, people want open floor plans a lot of time now, right? So that's the first things that we're looking at. That happened to be a, a non-load bearing wall. It wasn't even to the ceiling. It was like, you know, seven feet it's tall. A floating wall, yeah. yeah, floating wall. So that one came out right away. The other thing that we decided to do before, you had an island. Oh, sorry, it was, a, it was a small island that was right here. And then the cabinets ran down here like that. And the refrigerator goes right here. So this we decided to remove. So we took this small hall closet out. Because now when you walk in these front stairs, you're going to be able to see this amazing look straight up into the kitchen and we're going to have a nice big peninsula that is going to come down from here now. So what's it going to look like? You're just going to have a peninsula here? Yep. There you go. Yeah. So go ahead and drop and green. That? Like yep. Just a, so your kitchen's going to be just trapped here? Yeah. So, so the kitchen's going to be a big U-shape right here. Okay. This is going to be a, um, probably an eight foot island and then you're going to have, we're going to have a four foot slab so you're going to have a nice big breakfast bar. When those trees and bamboo and everything is gone. We actually have views straight out this window. Wow. Yeah, which is gonna be amazing. So, so not, that's all you're doing on here, besides updating everything. That's it for those changes. The other really cool thing that I'm gonna do is, so this is gonna get replaced, so we're gonna replace that with probably a sliding glass door. 
this guy fought me hard on that. I want to do French doors because they look cool, but I think a slider will be better because this whole it's wall. It's more modern too. So. Yeah, exactly. More modern. This whole wall is going to be essentially glass. So we're going to put a 12 foot slider right here onto the deck. So you're going to have this entire wall behind you. Exactly. That entire wall is essentially going to be glass and you're going to be able to see straight out to the outside. And you're not going to be looking at any neighbors or anything. So it's just going to, until I go to the house. <laughs> So the, uh, they wanted to see. They wanted to see. Yeah. So that's going to be amazing. This entire open floor plan all the way down, and then essentially just a wall of windows, which is going to be great. So you also have the basement. Are you doing much? Uh, can you guys see the basement, Nate? Yeah. Hmm? So this is this is upside down yeah, right now. Down. So it actually faces this way. Okay. Uh, we're kind of standing up in this area. So the basement, no. Nothing. I mean, we're we're keeping the same layout. Yeah. Everything's going to be. It's just all down. torn up down. We didn't get down to the basement, but it's just all torn up. Down oh yeah. There. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we don't have time. So you you guys, imagine it. Bathroom. Yeah. Bedroom. This bathroom room. looks just like the upstairs bathroom. <laughs> yeah. It's exactly the same. Exactly. They left me some change on the counters, which was nice. But I don't know if I'll reuse that. I don't know. More free stuff. So you to get it. All right. So now you got the upstairs, which we yes. did go through. So there's. So here's the stairs going up. Yep. We went through the master bath bedroom here. Yep. Are you doing anything as far as remodeling? So or? the change here that we went over, remember guys, is we're gonna do a shower here. So this yeah. is gonna become just a big shower instead of the uh, the bathtub. The house has three full baths right now, which is pretty excessive. So we're just gonna change that into the, the shower and then we're gonna make this a double vanity right here. Otherwise, the layout's the same like this in terms of the normal projects that I get being in Seattle, early 1900s yeah. houses, this is, this is cake. I mean, because this makes more sense now that we're listening to, uh, like as far as why this project can also go so quickly, yeah. right? As well. So the, I mean, the big issue is that kind of stuff. But like, when you're eliminating the fact that you don't have to do all this new engineering, new framing. There's some framing he's gonna have to do. There's some repairs, right? But it's like it's isolated versus you know I've seen some of your houses where you're like jacking houses up, digging a basement, you're going crazy all over the place. And that takes a little bit more time. That takes seven weeks instead of six. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Ten weeks. Uh, Ten weeks. All right. So nothing else is really changing here, but you're just updating all the windows, making everything. So all the all the electrical. No, no, windows. Good. Windows are good. Really? Windows. Yeah. So we have, I think, six windows throughout the house that has to be replaced. And wow. see, this is you'll understand, like in terms of scope of work, mm -hmm. the roof was replaced uh, about ten years ago. We're gonna have to patch one section. We're gonna clean it really well. The windows are all good, except for obviously the the ventilation one and the master. Uh -huh. And then I think there's like four other broken windows. Um, the electrical, all updated. You can see Romex wiring over there. Good, Plumbing yeah. is good. See so, that's, so so keep that in mind. So I want you. I'm gonna ask you a question though. So because we gotta wrap up here in a minute. Uh, how, like, when most people walk in a house like this, and we've done a video before if you go on YouTube where we walk one of our grow house, like, not one of our grow house, a house that we walk. Yeah, the truth is coming out now. <laughs> we walk the, uh, walk How many grow houses house. do you have, Tarbo? I got one right now. Remember, uh, the, it's where we had, the whole place was just floor to ceiling stuff, right? Yeah, you can't see anything. You can't see anything. So you gotta make these big adjustments. But when you know what to look for, you sit there like in a house like this, floor to ceiling or whatever stuff, yeah. he sees like, hey, this is all new electrical, this is all new that, the plumbing's great, the windows are all pretty new. Yeah. And you can see the details versus getting distracted by all of the stuff, distractions, right? And so it ends up being that the rehab's not as bad, yeah. right, once it's all out of there. If this house wasn't moldy and the landscaping is 20 grand in itself, yeah. just landscaping alone yeah. was. So, if you take out these big kind of weird things that are going on, this actually would be a pretty cosmetic renovation. If it wasn't moldy, that's a big chunk of money that's yeah. coming back. Like this, in terms of my projects, is pretty easy, yeah, which is why I'm stoked. Yeah, so, cool. <laughs> uh, I bet some of you guys are like, how the hell is this an easy project? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do you guys have any, if you guys have any last minute questions or anything like that going on, we're gonna be wrapping this up right now. Uh, we've gone over the numbers for you guys. This is a great deal. Uh, I'm actually extremely jealous. And the, you know, I thought it was like, oh, Let's see how bad this deal is. Like this fucking. I'm sorry. It's great. So for this is a unicorn. These don't come. Up, these do not come along very yeah. often. That's why you got such a beautiful check for yeah. bringing this to yeah. me. And I was looking at the numbers. He's just like. <laughs> he's like. These are getting more. <laughs> <laughs> so, any last questions? Uh, does Jared have a website? I do. So JaredBuysHouses.com. You guys can check me out there. JH1Homes.com is my company one. And then uh, Jared Flips Seattle. If you guys want to follow me on there. Yep. That's and where I'll post most of my content. Remember, it's Bigger Street. Pockets episode 341 just came out last week. If you want to hear his whole story uh, as well, and we're doing these at 12 p.m. every Wednesday going forward, unless I don't want to do it that Wednesday. But for the most part, we're doing it every Wednesday uh, on BP Live. Do you have a one, Justin? Look on those a couple of times. Um, how do you guys choose a new market? How do you choose a new in? market to yeah. invest in? Right? How, do you pick, how do you pick a new market to invest in? Have you invested in? outside of Seattle yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I've done a handful of deals outside of Seattle. The biggest thing is 
really just knowing your numbers. I mean, looking at the market carefully and knowing the comps. This one, to be frank, if it wasn't surrounded by new construction, this would have been really hard for me to justify because there aren't any houses that have been totally renovated like this. So when you are moving into a new market, even from Seattle to, you know, even Tacoma for me or any of these different areas, having really, really, really solid comps is the most important part is just really knowing those numbers. I don't want to add, know your strategy. Like, yeah. what is your yeah, reason yeah. for investing? Yeah, and so there's your exit, what is your purpose? Are you looking for buy and hold? Or are you looking for high appreciation, large, massive remodels, right? That have a good upside, but have risk. Yeah. So each, and by market, you know, Seattle's one market, Milwaukee's another, Phoenix is another, like Atlanta's hot, like is another, like all that stuff is just, what's your purpose? Each market's gonna have its uniqueness and what you're gonna be able to get if it's high cash flow. Unfortunately, Seattle's not the market for that. So if you're looking for high cash flow, amazing bird deals, it's a tough market to do that. And you'll get high appreciation, but now he's not gonna get any cash flow really on this property at all, right? So uh, that's not why to buy this one. It's for the long-term and appreciation benefits. And then so know, the, know your strategy. That's how you start <laughs> looking for the markets. Are you doing single family, multifamily? Are you are you gonna buy and hold? Are you going to fix and flip? And then start doing research in those areas. Bigger pockets is a wealth of knowledge on the forums to find new markets too. And then the last thing, when going into a new market, especially if you're in a different state, having the team boots on the ground on is the ground. probably one of the most important parts the because, most. <laughs> yeah, the most, right? Because if you're in another state and you're trying to flip a house, how are you supposed to monitor that? Even yeah. if they're sending you photos, they might just send you photos of like little bits that are getting done. Oh God, we're under attack. I don't know if you guys saw that. <laughs> oh man, Sasquatch, he lives here by the way. Uh, anyway, having a, a solid team, I think yeah. is super important. Cool. And so, uh, we're wrapping up the, we got to go cause the demo, we told the demo guys they can come back till one and it's one o'clock right now. So we got to stop cause they're going to get, they're going to get pissed. Uh, so, uh, remember 12 PM Wednesday, we're doing a BP live. Uh, if you have any other questions, go ahead and type them. We'll do our best to go back on here later on the replay and answer them for you as we go for the, on the comments. Uh, make sure you check out the Bigger Pockets conference coming out October 7th, 8th, and 9th in Nashville. Uh, purchase there. I'm on, I'm fixated. My company is Fixated Real Estate. Check us out in Facebook as well as Instagram. You can follow me, Tarl Yarber. Uh, on, and I'm the only one on uh, Instagram, <laughs> so it'll be hard to find. We got JH1 Homes, Jared Flips Seattle, whatever you want to call and it. And JH1 Homes on Facebook also. Yeah, as well. Uh, and keep following us every single week. And don't forget, too, in about two weeks, Jay Scott and I are going to start doing webinars for BP, just like Brandon Turner does right now, same with Matt Faircloth. So be on the lookout for that. That's going to be great, awesome. We're really, really excited about doing that. And we'll catch you guys on the next one next week, Wednesday at 12, Pacific Standard Time. See you guys later. Nice. Good job. Bam. Boom. That was fun. <laughs> Thank you, Nate. Thank you, Justin. Yeah. Came in with this a project wind. made me bleed. Nobody me makes too. me bleed on my own. How'd you do that? No, that was a nail in the uh, nail in the uh, master. I hope so. <laughs>